Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, as you're aware, if you've been watching the channel, I've been working on a micro camper using the BMW i3. And I came across something which I think is the RV and van life's dirty little secret. And that's um, moisture control problems. Um, what happens is, of course, as you're living inside of an RV or a camper or sleeping in a car, you're going to get moisture buildup inside from your breath and just being inside of the car. Now, normally you can get rid of that through venting or cracking the windows. But with uh, moisture buildup, uh, lots of things can bad can happen, like uh, smell issues, mold buildup in the walls, health issues from breathing the spores, and, of course, just damage to any materials in the vehicle from the uh, moisture buildup. Moisture buildup can occur from multiple sources. Cooking, both from the food and also from the fuel being used for cooking, can cause a problem. Poor ventilation of the vehicle. Uh, sleeping, you add gas a lot of moisture when you're sleeping. Uh, heating of the vehicle using uh, gas or petroleum products. And of course, cold surfaces like windows are a, a source. When the temperatures drop, the air temperatures drop, the amount of water that the air can carry drops as well. So you get to a certain low temperature, the carrying capacity of the air is, is saturated, meaning that the moisture has to come out of the air. You see that when you're breathing out condensation or you really see it on uh, windows that uh, get cold compared to the rest of the car and hit that condensation point. So sleeping in an enclosed space is a real problem as well. You can outgas up to 250 liters or more of moisture per uh, eight hours sleeping in a vehicle. And the warm, moist air that you uh, breathe out can very quickly then uh, condense on a cold surfaces inside the vehicle and uh, start to create moisture inside the vehicle. So it's a it's a really big problem and it's uh, you actually outgas a lot of moisture in your breath during the night. So what are the options? Well, with the uh, electric car, one of the options is preconditioning or a camping mode where you can periodically use a heater and air conditioning to pull the moisture out of the vehicle. The problem is it uses a lot of power. Uh, second option is uh, propane or butane heaters to warm up the interior, but that actually adds moisture from the combustion process products of the uh, propane and, and butane. Plus it's dangerous and you have to have the fuel available, which is a cost. Uh, you can also crack open the windows, which is a cheap and easy way to uh, get rid of the moisture, but you also let the cold air in and it's a security risk depending on where you are. Another option is to use uh, chemical absorbers or uh, silica gel absorbers to remove the moisture. The good thing is they're, they're fairly low cost, but they also don't remove a lot of moisture as well. A thousand grams of uh, silicon gel will remove uh, roughly two to three hundred uh, milliliters of moisture, which is about what you'd uh, outgas in a night from sleeping. Small dehumidifiers can also work, but those that use just uh, you know ten twenty watts uh, don't remove the, enough water to uh, compensate for the amount of water you're putting into the environment just from sleeping alone. So. Uh, larger ones can do the water removal, but then they consume a great deal of electricity, which is problematic as well. Finally, there's heat exchangers, which uh, return the internal heat that's being exhausted out of your car back into the air that's coming back in, which is uh, really great, but uh, they don't exist for small applications like RVs, at least that I've seen. So since there's no perfect solution, I thought, well, maybe can I make a small heat exchanger and test it? One of the cool things I came across was something called a spiral heat exchanger where you've got two parallel channels that are uh, coiled, coiled around into a spiral and the air going out then loses its heat to the air coming in and thereby essentially saving almost all of the heat that uh, uh, would have otherwise been wasted going out of the car. And the uh, second thing which is a uh, cool trick or a bonus is that it's the cold air outside is coming in, as it warms up, it actually drops the relative humidity of the, of the air, meaning it can carry and hold more water. So it uh, should also keep uh, windows and other things more dry on the inside of the car. So I took some uh, aluminum sheeting from the hardware store and cut it into 40 millimeter long strips. It was about 10 feet long. Took that and then coiled it around into a uh, spiral, a double spiral. You can see there's actually two different uh, channels that go all the way from the outside to the inside. And then had two separate fans, one for each channel. That's one sucking air out and the other one's blowing air in. And then uh, at the uh, outside, you want to keep the two channels separate so they don't mix. So I have a little channel there to keep it separate. 
Uh, then uh, put everything together, glued it together, and then tested it uh, with two fans to a 12 volt power supply. And everything seems to be uh, working pretty well up to that point. I also measured the airflow with the anemometer, so I have an idea of how much uh, air is actually moving through the system. For a test, I have a bunch of thermometers, and I put it on top of a cold cooler as uh, the outside air source uh, to have a kind of a controlled environment to see how efficient the unit is. So the net result is that uh, for some reason, the output temperature, even from the beginning, was somewhat lower than my input temperature, but uh, stabilized pretty well. And I got an overall efficiency uh, based on those uh, numbers of around, here it is, 84%. Uh, I cut the airflow back to about 1.5 meters per second flow rates and did the calculations again based on that and got up to about, I think it was 87% efficiency so not too bad okay so it's been running about five minutes uh, again apologize for the uh, uh, makeshift uh, installation on the window here to do a test and 64.5 for the input output 64.9 uh, inside temperature with the preconditioning running is now hit about 78.6 at roughly the level of the heat exchanger so Looks like we're doing pretty well at holding uh, the heat inside while exchanging the air. Uh, definitely getting some flow. I can feel the airflow right now. My hand uh, exiting here. Quick look from the inside while it's uh, running. I've got uh, preconditioning on right now, so it's about uh, 80 degrees towards the top of the car. And that's the temperature probe that's measuring the temperature in the top. So you can see the input and then the exit is uh, on the side coming out of that channel as well. So in conclusion, there really wasn't a optimal solution that I could find for getting rid of the humidity. There's always trade-offs with cost or uh, energy usage or capacity of the moisture solution. Uh, the heat exchanger idea indeed seems to be able to save uh, a good part of the heat, 85 to 90 percent of the heat, uh, by putting fresh cold air back inside of the car. So that looks like a reasonable solution at this point. Although it is still a prototype and needs to be optimized even further. So thanks so much for watching and I really hope there's some information here that will help you with your quest to control moisture in your own vehicle. I'm also curious as to what option you would have chosen or have chosen to control moisture and uh, please share it in the comments. Again, thanks for watching.